Praise the Lord, friendship. Oh, Amen. Rebecca, mm. bless me. Yes, yeah, so amazing. Mm -hmm. So amazing. And God is just that. He's so amazing. Some people might say, even when you're going through, how could you declare that God is amazing? He is. He is. In the private, in the personal places, God is amazing. In the public places, out in the opening, God is amazing. And how does the song say, we declare your glory? So amazing. We thank God for Jesus. We thank God for Jesus. And Rebecca, thank you for letting the Spirit use you in your flag ministry there. I know your grandmother will be proud of you. Praise the Lord. So, uh, there's a word from the Lord uh, coming out of the uh, fourth chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. Just the first and the second verse. Uh, just to keep it simple. Um, and if I can put a name to the little time we're going to have together. It would just be add or subtract. Add or subtract. And uh, I know in, uh, in my profession, you know, one, one of the many things I do, uh, you know, we grow lawns. Our company is Lawn Technologies, and we named ourselves that after our technology to grow lawns. And, uh, so one of the things we do to grow a nice lawn is we add fertilizer. We add a couple times a year. We add uh, different things to deal with the weeds and we add different nutrients, I call it nutrient packages to the lawn and to get it nice and green. And, and when you take that away, the grass doesn't grow that well. You get the weeds. The grass doesn't have the color. And the grass doesn't grow very well. It's not very lush. It's not very thick. Um, and so such is the dissertation in the book of Deuteronomy in the fourth chapter. Uh, it says, don't add anything and don't take anything away. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Thank you. God, this is your moment. This is your hour. The earth is yours and the fullness thereof. Here I stand, Lord. Use me as you see fit, Lord. Remove the things that are not of like you, Lord. Allow that your manifold wisdom and power be, be shown and manifest here in me, Lord that you might get the glory. And then also, Lord, allow those listening, partaking in this meal, Lord, that it shall be nourishment for them. We thank you, Lord. We love you, and we praise you. And I just ask, Lord, that you give me boldness, and that you give me clarity of speech, and that you allow me to do that which is pleasing in your sight, that you might get the glory. In Jesus' name, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So the book of Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter, like I said, just two verses, real simple. Don't want to complicate things. And it reads this way. Follow me over. Fourth chapter of Deuteronomy, verses one and two. And we see here just a little background of that. Uh, Israel is about to go into, Moses is speaking to them in this instance. And uh, they're about to go and, you know, possess the land that God had promised them as an inheritance. And so, Moses is speaking to them, and this is, this is what he's saying to them. This is what he's speaking to them about. It's, it, the title of it is Obedience Commanded. It says, Now Israel, 
Hear the decrees and laws I'm about to teach you. Follow them so that you may live and may go in and take possession of the land the Lord, the God of your ancestors, is giving you. Do not add to what I command you and do not subtract from it, but keep the commands of the Lord your God that I give you. Don't add anything, don't take anything away. We have to be careful, and my concern, and my fear, and my worries, although I know that the Lord has it all in his hands, is for the people of God that we not take anything away from his word, that we not add anything to his word. That we find a way, find our place, close, back to Bible, back to the unadulterated word of God. So we see here when, it, when, when the scripture is telling us, don't take anything away. And it also says, do not add anything. And that principle has to do with man's hand. Man's hand in the Word of God and how we handle it, how we teach it, how we live it, how we share with others. And so it's saying, you know, don't let us not put our own opinions. Let us not formulate our own ideas about God's Word. Let us go directly to the Word of God. Thereby, we can access the true, unadulterated gospel, which the Bible says is the Word of God and it's a power unto salvation. It's the power that we need. It's what we're looking for. It's what we need in this time. So many things have been taken away. Literally. Pandemic, people dying, sickness, just what I would call, if you just put it flat, a little, uh, uh, it's distorted. Black, it's distorted now. Things are distorted. Things are out of place. But God's word is eternal, it's constant. It's the same. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. It's His Word. And so, we don't want to add what we think. We don't want to add uh, our own opinions to it. The Bible says, one faith, one Lord, and one baptism. Now, on the other side of that, we have many denominations. And it's my contention or it's a question, I wonder, is that man's way of interjecting their own ideas, our own feelings, our own beliefs to God's word? Because he said only one faith, one Lord, and one baptism. Don't add anything to the word of God and don't take anything away. The taking away also has to do with bad teaching. Hypocrisy. You know, people saying one thing and doing another. People calling themselves believers, but living just like the world. I mean, in this time, it should not be, or any time, if we are who we say we are as believers, if someone were to walk in today we should be able, as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, to display some type of evidence and power as to the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That should be a light and an attraction to that person coming in, and at the very least, uh, retain them enough that they can be taught and learn what you know this whole thing is about. The Lord and 
about salvation of your soul and what Jesus did for us, and just that they can learn. And if we're unable to do that, then my contention is there's no display of the true power of God. There's no display of the power. The power is found in the Word. I always go to the book of Acts and uh, the fifth chapter and, um, you know, just the first church, you know, and the way that they did things. They met, they assembled, you know, they prayed, you know, when there was need for leadership, you know, they sought the Lord for it, you know. Uh, sometimes we think that we can, uh, you know, uh, God is a theocracy. Meaning, it's all God. Him in one. He's, he's all in one. And sometimes we think that we can get together and decide these things for God. And I wonder, are we adding to what God has already told us to do? It's clear. It's in the Word. I think that the distortion is in our inability or our lack to confer with the Word of God. I mean, look, it can't go any easier. We got the phone, right? You can hit it right on the phone wherever you are. And you know, it sounds almost maybe silly, but I would say, you know, if you're not sure, just write it into the phone. What does the Bible say about this? And see what, the, see what comes back. Read the scripture. You know, we need to stick close to Bible. I believe that, and the word shows that, in the, in, in the book of Acts and the first church when um, the people were on one accord um, and when they did according to the word of God there was power, people were healed people were saved, thousands of people in one day I mean, we have to ask ourselves individually as believers who have, who have we led to Christ and, and say the last couple of years have you actually witnessed to a person have, 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 have you actually shared your testimony? Have you spent time with an individual to, you know, teach them and to, you know, share with them the word of God, to allow them to experience the power of, the, of, of God that's in you? Have you, have you witnessed? It's really simple that um, by now, adding anything to the Word of God and by not taking anything away, therein lies the power of the Word of God. It's the power to salvation for those seeking the Lord. Proverbs 35 and 6 says, Every word of God is flawless. He is a shield to those who take refuge in Him. Do not add to His words or He will rebuke you and prove you a liar. And so, I wonder if the lie is, as believers, and as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, um, are we actually doing what we're commissioned to do? Is there evidence of it? And if not, is it because we have not taken refuge in the Word of God? You know, it's like one thing to just to read the scripture. It's another thing to live by the scripture. So in other words, what we learn, what we understand about scripture, we're called to put it into practice, to actually live it, to allow it to minister to us for change. This is now Israel. Hear the decrees and the laws I'm about to teach you. Follow them. The Bible says, follow them so that you may live and may go in and take possession of the land the Lord, the God of your ancestors has given you. And I liken the land to the promises of God. You know, um, even in this day, you know, our salvation. You know, our promise to have relationship with God if, as we follow Him. You know, the power of the Holy Spirit to uh, transform us and to sanctify us and to renew us and to cause us to be and do and love one another as God has commanded us. So 
So that's the possession of the land today. You know, the fruits of the Spirit, you know, the presence of God in our lives, you know, working out our own salvation, you know. That's the possession of the land today. But if we don't follow what Scripture tells us to do, then how can we go in? How is the way? What is the way? How shall we possess the land? And if we reach out and grab it, do we know what to do with it? Do we know what God wants us to do with it? Because if not God present, there's no life in it. You know, it could be here today and gone tomorrow. So we need the instruction. We need the guidance. We need the direction of the Word of God. And we need to learn and teach others to stick closely to the Word of God. Because, like I said, in this time that we're living in, you know, so many things going on, so many things distorted, um, so many things certainly contrary to, 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 to the will of God, people living, you know, certainly contrary to the will of God. Um, but we know that God remains in control uh, of everything. Be not fooled that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and that he remains on the throne, regardless of who's in office or what's going on or what people say or what they don't say. God remains. Um, but we're in a time where people are lost and people are hurting, and are we who we say we are? You know, are we really uh, sharing with others in the love of God that only can come by the power of His Word and by His Holy Spirit? So are we really doing and being who God has called us to be? Or are we adding things in to uh, accommodate or accomplish our own desires and our own lusts um, and our own perspectives about things? Or are we providing an open way that those that are seeking might receive the Lord Jesus Christ? It's all by His Word. 2 Timothy 3 and 16 says that all Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. So teaching is the process of attending to people's needs, experiences, and feelings, and ways to help to learn particular things. That sounds like the Bible, right? That sounds like what the Bible that's what the Bible does. It teaches us. Teaching is the process of attending to people's needs, experiences, and feelings and ways to help to learn particular things. Well, we can go even better now because the Bible teaches us all things, right? It's all in the Word of God. But, I mean, if we notice, you know, it's attending to people's needs and experiences. And as believers, you know, and this is, this, this, underneath this, at the root of this, is the commission. Go ye therefore, teaching and preaching and baptizing them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But what are you teaching them? It's only the Word of God. It's not my intellect. It's not my understanding. It's the understanding that God gives me of the Word, but it's His Word. Clear. There's the power. And that's what I like about, you know, the Church of Acts. And I, uh, you know, we find also in uh, the Acts, the second chapter, where Peter is uh, preaching to the people and he's saying, you know, the Jews, and he's letting them know that, um, yeah, God sent Jesus, he's, he's from God, and you didn't recognize him and you killed him, and God rose him, you know, for the remission of sins of all. And then the Bible says that the people asked them, brothers, what shall we do? And Peter replied, repent and be baptized. And so he didn't add his own personal feelings in there or his own ideas. He just told them the truth by the word of God. And I believe that as we find our way back to strictly Bible, and therein lies the power of God unto salvation. You know, not always some of these things that we see going on. Sometimes we can't even tell the difference, you know, between um, the body of Christ and the world. 
you know, and it's even becoming that way when, 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 as we are digitally recording things, you know. They have titles for people and they have all these different things that they're doing and I mean like putting a lot of effort into all of that, but you know, do you invite some money into your home? You know, do you spend the time to actually witness and spend time with people? You know, are we really doing the work? Second Timothy also says that uh, scriptures God breathed is useful for uh, correcting. So it says correct means the fact, facts, standard, truth, accurate, precise, but precise in accordance with the fact or the truth. Sounds like it's saying just take it exactly how it is, precise. It's not, but I'm saying that's what the word, that's what the scripture says, and that's what it means. And then it says for training. It says teach a particular skill or type of behavior. So it's kind of like um, teach and train are kind of like in a similar, you know, synonymous. So my charge is that we should study the Bible more, learn more, and emulate what the Bible is saying to us, you know. Um, study the book of Acts, you know. Study what they did in the first church, you know. Study how, you know, God dealt with them and, you know, how the move of the Spirit was upon them and, how people were saved and they came to the Lord. You know, let us just relinquish ourselves to the Word of God. Let us just find ourselves when there's a question, when there's a concern, when there's worry. Let us just find ourselves to the Word of God and allow the power to be enough. For you know, also, um, Jesus took that same power, right? Um, and he died, he rose, and then he, he died and he rose, and then he rose with all power, but he took the power, and what did he do? He then took the power and served. He washed the disciples' feet. You see? And so it's that same power and that service that is born and bred out of the Word of God. It's not an earthen fleshly thing, we're never going to get there on our own, apart from the power and the word of God and His Holy Spirit. And so when we find ourselves in the churches and, in, you know, as believers and we're doing all these formalities and all these things and um, it's actually to the point now maybe those things become a hindrance that we just have to go back to the beginning, go back to where it is, go back to the word of God. Yeah, so when Peter told them the truth, and that's that's what I want to do. I want to I want to be bold like Peter. Right? I want to be able to tell people the truth, you know, about God. Because you know, and that's not an ego thing. The boldness is the desire that they could do what they did here. The people replied, "Brothers, what shall we do?" And so, on the other side of that boldness is a heart to love and to serve. So in other words, I don't want to just be saying it, I want to be able to live it and allow it to live through me. And what good is it if, 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 if it's not going to affect any change in a person's life? You know? What good is it to say I'm a believer and I'm not really, you know, and there's no power, there's no display of any power, there's no effectiveness of it, there's nothing shown, there's no fruit. But here, they were hooked up. That's where pastors say they were hooked up. Peter was bold. He told them. You know, and sometimes you might have to tell people, you know, uh, just like it is. He told them, God sent Jesus to save you. You didn't recognize him. Then you killed him. And then God rose him for the remission of sin. And the Bible says that it cut him deep. It cut them deep. 
And so that's a good cutting. That's not a cutting where you're going to bleed blood. It's a cutting that caused them to do and to ask the question, brothers, what shall we do? And that's what I want to do. I want to be able to have the word of God manifest in me and me be able to share the love of God, you know, with others and take the time to the point where, and then tell them the truth. That it, you know, because it, and the word also says, all scriptures God breathes and useful for rebuking. So sometimes we might have to step on a few toes. In the end, he was able to tell them what was most important, that they should repent and be baptized. He said, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You know, and that's kind of like, isn't that what you want to give or offer? You know, isn't that what you want to share with someone who you see struggling, who you see day in and day out with the same struggle, you know, uh, with the same anxieties and same fears, and you know that they don't have the Lord Jesus in their life, you know that, you know, they haven't confessed Him as their Lord and Savior, and you can see the effects on their life, you know, that's why I want to be bold. I want to be bold to be able to share that love with them. That, you know, that could cause them to say, what shall I do? That's what it's all about. That's what we do all of this for. That's why the Lord saved us. Not for ourselves, but for others. To help each other. You know? So we need to stop being so critical on one another. And, you know, and, and, and stop being so self-serving and be more God-serving. So as we see here, again, if I could just say it plain, um, we don't need to add to the Word of God, and we certainly don't need to take away by our antics, by the things that we do humanly, fleshly, you know, that really do take away. That, that, that takes away. Because if we say who we say we are, and then we're doing contrary, that's taken away for the person that's looking and watching that takes away from it. And we don't need to add our own intellect and our own ideas about it. We need to just stick strictly to the Bible. And I don't remember seeing an act where they declared in the denomination. And you know, and I'm not saying, you know, anything other than that, but I don't remember seeing, you know, but I, I do see that the numbers were added. Sometimes 3,000 in a day were saved. So all I'm saying is let's get back to what's important. You know what I mean? People are saying, well, you don't have this, you don't do that. Well, okay, where it is. And we can find where it is and we can determine if that's what God is saying and that's what it is. And we need that. You know, you got this group over here, you got that group over there, you got all these different people. All this, all this, uh, it's, it's uh, convoluted, the world is now. It's diluted and convoluted. That's what it is. That's a good word for it. So let's find our comfort in the Word of God. Let's not only just, you know, declare the Word of God when, you know, in psalms and hymns when we're praising or when things are going our way, but, you know, let's declare the Word of God in the tough situations, in the hard places when we're going through Acts 2, and, and, and this is in closing, um, verses 39 and 40. Amen. 39, 40, and 41, actually. And this is Peter continuing to preach, you know, in addition to after people said, well, what must we do? And he said, repent, you know, be baptized for remission of your sins. He told them, you know, the truth, and it cut them deep, which means they were convicted. And then the result was they wanted to know what they needed to do. They were ready. And so my contention is when we, you know, clearly, precisely deal with the Word of God in truth and in spirit, then there's power, right? And then people will be and move where God wants them to do. It sets the stage. So verse 39 says, the promise this is Peter speaking now to the same people. 
He says, the promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off. So the children and the people who are there, you know, they're being convicted, they're believing. But there are some who are far off. And so it's the same promise that Jesus died and rose for the mission. He said, believe him, repent of your sins, and be baptized. So it's for those who have yet to come as well. And all whom the Lord our God will call. Verse 40 says, with many other words, he warned them. And he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So sometimes that's all you can do. You know, it's everything that we can do. Even to plead, you know. Repent. You know. Repent of that thing that you're doing. Ask God to forgive you. Even the church. We, maybe there's some, maybe the church needs to repent. Maybe the church needs to repent. Maybe that's why we're not in the building. Maybe that's why God said, see you. He warned them, pleaded with them, saved yourself. And we know that it's by the name of Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the only name in heaven and on earth by which man can be saved. And of course, we can't save ourselves. We are saved by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, save yourself from this corrupt generation. Verse 41, those who accept it, the Bible says those who accepted his message were baptized. And here's a display of the power. And about 3,000 were added to their number that day. 3,000. They said a few things to him. That don't look like that took a long time. You know what I'm saying? It don't look like it took a long time. And a lot of kind of up, you know. You know, even for me, I mean, you know, we write a lot of things down, you know, but he just told the truth. And there was a the power by the word of God, you know. And so maybe, you know, that's what I'm saying, you know, we've gotten far away. We got to check ourselves, you know, and see what really matters. And my, my contention is that the word of God is what matters. And because we can't tell, you know, head or tail of what's going on now because it's that way, you know, like he said, it's a corrupt generation that we're living in. Um, we need to just be clear, and, and, and it's a safe place for us, you know, at the Word of God. It's safe, you know, and uh, it's not safe out there. You don't know what's going on, you know, but it's safe. You know, we find refuge in the Word of God. So, it's my prayer that... Um, and my plea, and my warning, that we save ourselves, you know, that we um, obey the Lord Jesus Christ and His command, that we follow Him, that we love one another, that we follow His word. God has already done it for us. It's a finished work. Jesus hung, he bled, and he died. He got up with all power. It's already done. We just having a hard time getting there. And we don't need to add our ideas and take away what we want to take away, make things the way they are. We just need to accept the word of God as it stands and, and go with it. You know? And the Lord has made allowances for all of it. He wouldn't tell us to make allowances for each other if there was no allowance for us, right? If he wasn't making allowance for us. Because I mean, by the rights, we don't deserve anything that was done on the cross, right? We never can uh, uh, repay or there's nothing that we can do to even deserve it. 
So the Lord has shown who he is and continues to down through the generations. Despite our corrupted ways and sinful ways, the Lord never deterred from his purpose and plan for his creation. Thus, Jesus the Christ hung, bled, and died for us. And even for those, even for us who didn't recognize him, and even for those who actually killed him, and that's what Peter was saying to them, it was you. You killed him. He was for you, and you killed him. But even then, God makes an appropriation. He makes an allowance. And what does Peter say to them? Repent and be baptized. So I mean, what else can we ask for? God is so good to us. And I mean, look, you know, you can keep on carrying on. We can keep on going the way that we're going. But you're going to get what you're going to get to. You know? So, I mean, while we have time, while there's day, while there's light, let us work. You know, let's work on ourselves. Let us do the work of the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, and I have a feeling that more importantly, it's the work that we have to allow and let God do within us. You know, surrendering ourselves to the will of God. It's the, it's the personal work. It's personal. You and God, me and God. You know, And I imagine that that song, whoever wrote that song, and that was their declaration. I declare you glory. It's so amazing. You know, there had to be some rough place there. It had to be some down, hard place. But God, he's amazing. It's his glory. And so look, you know, it's all laid out for us. And the question is, what are you going to do, you know? And that's the opposite of what they asked. You know, what, what, what must we do? That's what the people said after they heard the truth. And so my contention is what we need to do is get back to Bible. GBB, maybe we make some t-shirts. Get back to Bible, you know? Get back to Bible. Not what you think, what you feel, get back to Bible. And you know, listen, I'm speaking, I'm speaking to myself. And uh, there are a lot, there is a lot of hypocrisy. There's a lot of people who aren't teaching, the, you know, false teaching. And there are a lot of people who are, like the Bible says in 2 Timothy uh, 3, they're lovers of themselves. They don't really, they aren't saved. They aren't really trying to do the work and the will of the Lord. And people are being hurt. And people are being discouraged. You know? And so, the surest protection is to know, to learn for yourself. You know? To know the Word of God for yourself. To understand. And you know, yeah, God sends preachers and teachers, but, you know, wake up in the morning, open the book. Eat the sandwich at lunchtime, check the book out. Late in the evening before you go to bed, check the book out. You know, look, study, read, learn, know for yourself, you know. Um, we're not in the days of the, you know, the priest when, you know, it was one book and you needed the priest to tell you, you know, God made it available to all of us. You know, we can all have a Bible, we can all, and then we can, you know, if we believe that God says we have, he placed his spirit in us, we have the Holy Spirit, and we can ask for whatever we want in his name and according to his will. And the Bible says, the Lord says, that it shall be done. So we can do that. And so we have all of these provisions that we need to utilize. God bless your friendship. Um, I pray that um, something was said, uh, you know, that you can take. And, and, and don't only take it for yourself, you know, share it with someone else, you know. Don't add anything to the Word of God, and certainly don't take anything away. You know, let's strictly, let's stick to the Bible, let's go back to the Bible, and then we'll find a clear, concise, as it says, accurate way to go. We'll know for sure. 
So God is good. He's already provided that for us. So praise the Lord. Uh, God bless you. And until we meet again, amen.